Shabbat Shalom, family. Shabbat Shalom. This is the day that Yah has made, and we're going to rejoice, rejoice and be glad in this day. day. Hallelujah. I like to start off the day with that, you know, mm -hmm. because what it does is you, you already didn't establish, hey, this is Yah's day. He made this day. Mm -hmm. And so it makes you think different about what goes on in that day. Right. Right? Because you say, Yah made this day. So when you wake up, you're saying, what do you have for me in this day, Father Yah? Right. What is it you want me to do in this day, Father Yah? Mm -hmm. Wow. What do you have for me? Yep. Wow. And it's like you start the day off saying, hey, I'm alive. I yeah. woke up, you know? Yeah. That's the beginning of it all. And so yes. why not start the rest of the day or finish the rest of the day off? looking forward to what Yah has to offer or what yes. Yah is going to do in that day Absolutely. in your life. Absolutely. If we thank Him, the Bible says in everything, give thanks. That's right. Right? And if we know that the day is made and that yep. in everything we must give thanks, yep. let's look forward to good things. That's yep. why the scripture says, whatsoever things are good, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are honest and of a good report, if there be any virtue yes. and be any praise, think on, on these, these things, things. Yeah. so if we can just purge our thoughts in the morning before right. um, they start running amok mm -hmm. before things start to enter in <laughs> yeah. you know before you go to work and you mm -hmm. already got it set in your mind that i'll just i hope he don't get on my nerves today i hope she don't get on my instead of starting the day off like that yeah say this is the day that yah has made That's right. somebody say something that i don't like i'm going to rejoice and be glad in this day That's because right. it's the day that yah has already made that's right. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 Well, family, today's lesson is titled A Rebellious Lost Generation. Mm -hmm. yeah. <sighs> okay. Where do we begin? <laughs> okay. Let me say this to you, right? I've seen a lot of things over the years, okay? Enough mm -hmm. things that have made me just literally just um, look at today's generation with with a sarcastic look like, like <laughs> what is going on here and the scripture talks about these generations coming up that are going to be different from the previous generation worse and Gener worse yeah generations they get worse and worse now I want to say this to you if you think that there's nothing wrong with today's generation then you may be part of the problem absolutely because if you can't see it, then something is wrong. Because to me, it's clear as day. Now, now I will admit, I got some age on me, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And sometimes when you have a little age on you, you've been through things, you've seen life change, and so you see what's going on. Because I'm not kidding you, from the time that I was a youth to what I'm seeing now, I don't even know what you call this. Uh, me either. I don't even know what you call this. youth. You don't even call youth youth. You call them monsters, you don't call you youth anymore. You call them monsters. Well, that's what the scripture says. The scripture, says. yeah. It says, and menstruous women shall bring forth monsters. monsters. That's right. Now, that's of course, right. we are not talking about every last youth. That's right. We're just speaking in general. In because general, yeah. in general, that is what is promoted. That's what they love to put in movies that's and right. music and all of this. And and so the ones that are doing what they're supposed to, they're kind of lost in the shadows. Yes. As a matter of fact, I mentioned the other day on my channel that good news people don't want to hear about that ain't nobody it ain't too many people not you know everyone right but not too many people want to hear about the good news of what um a, a father and a son start yeah. the business together and a mother and a daughter start yeah everyone wants to hear the bad news, the bad news that's yeah. just the way it is yeah and i want to say this too mm -hmm. it's not just this generation i think the generation before this one as well yeah okay but if you trace it all back mm -hmm. It actually goes back. Somebody dropped the ball. Yeah. It actually goes back a little bit further, but, you know, it didn't really take hold into these past two generations. Yeah. You know, it's amazing. I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you how this is supposed to work, right? And I guess, I guess scripture. <laughs> I got, I got <laughs> a scripture for you. I got a few of them for you, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. But I want to say this here, right? The way it's supposed to work is, okay, it's supposed to kind of work like this, right? So let's say I grew up as a young teenager struggling going through this struggling with this struggling with that right struggling trying to get a job right and so if i struggle trying to get a job and it was hard for me to get a job then that should click in my brain that i don't want my children to have to go through the same thing 
Mm-hmm. Okay, so if that clicks right mm-hmm. in my brain, then what I will do was do all I will do all I can to see to it that my children don't have to go through the same thing. So, in other words, I'm gonna make sure they get the right education. I'm gonna have make sure they get the right skills. I'm gonna make sure they get the right everything they need, so they can go one step further than I went. Yes. So I expect my children to be beyond me at their at the age I was. I expect them to be beyond me. I expect them to be wiser than me because I didn't have me at my age to teach me then, mm-hmm. right? right? So I expect them to be wiser than me, right? But sometimes that don't always work out, right? That's right. And sometimes you have to you have to really try hard because the enemy got all these devices, mm-hmm. all these things going on, and these things are such a distraction to today's generation. Until this generation, as some people say, they're going to hell in a handbasket. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, I have a scripture for mm. you too on what you just said, but yeah. I don't know where it is. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but well, maybe I, we can find it. Well, the thing is, it was talking about a righteous prophet. Okay. He was really righteous, and he served Yah. He did everything that he was supposed to do mm-hmm. the right way. Yes. But his son after him. Yeah. Oh, so here we are. We're talking about a righteous man who Yah was pleased with. It said yeah. he was pleased with him. Some of you may know the story of what I'm talking about. Yah was thoroughly pleased with the father. But when that son came along, he was hell on yeah. wheels. Okay? Yeah. Hell on wheels. Totally different than his father. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. what you were saying about sometimes it don't always work out that way. Yeah. You can't tell me that that righteous man wasn't a righteous example to his son. Yeah. But somewhere along the line, the son went astray. And the Most High said he was more evil than anyone had been he at probably, that time. He probably despised his father. He probably despised probably so. his father and what his father was doing. So I'm not growing. Because I'm, I'm going to show you how things work, right? Okay. Now, I'm going to be honest. <clears throat> I knew people that I, when I grew up, when I, was, when I was young, I watched these people that were older than me. And I saw what they had to go through to make it in life. And I did make these steps. I said, you know, I'm not going down that road. Mm-hmm. I, that's just how I felt. I'm not going down there. I'm going to find me a different road to go down because I, I just, I don't have the patience to go through what this person went through. So I chose a different road. Mm-hmm. But I didn't choose a wicked road. Okay, understand what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. I just chose a better road. Mm-hmm. Today's generation aren't really choosing a better road. They're just choosing the, whichever road, road make them feel better, but it's not necessarily a better road. If you understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It makes them feel good, but it's not good for them, right? Mm-hmm. Now, I got a scripture. Let's go to the scripture in Ecclesiastes. I want you to understand how this generation thing goes. And I want you to pay attention. This is Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 4. Lately, um, everyone has been saying that the volume isn't that good. So let me check it real quick and see. Yeah, it, looks, it looks all the way up. Yeah. Okay, so we, we're going to try to scream to our, the top of our lungs as yes. we can for those of you. Okay, you said that you can't hear. So you said Ecclesiastes chapter 1. Yes. Okay. Verse 4. Verse 4 reads as follows. It says, one generation passes away and another generation comes, but the earth abides forever. Okay, so... Basically, it's trying to tell you how this generation thing goes. It's not one generation. It's many generations. They just come one after another, after mm-hmm. another. And that previous generation is supposed to learn. Uh, the first, the, the, the latter generation is supposed to learn from the previous generation. Right. Did I say that right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, okay. Mm-hmm. They're supposed to learn from the other generation. And that ain't always so. They don't really learn like they right, should. Right. From matter of fact, a lot of them end up despising. And they don't want to go in the same path. And they end up being worse. Right. Now, I got a scripture, right? Mm-hmm. Because this scripture here showed me that it's something to this. When I, I read this to you all, we read this, we covered the scripture before. But in this new light of what we're talking about now in today's generation, I had to go to this scripture again. This is Judges chapter 2. And we're going to read 6 through 15. Now, I'm going to tell you something. I need you to really listen to this. Mm-hmm. Listen to this. Chapter 2, verse 6 through 15. 15. So we're reading Judges chapter 2, verses 6 through 15. And when Yahusha Joshua had let the people go, yes. the children of Yashrael went every man unto his inheritance to possess the land. And the people served Yahuwah all the days of Yahusha and all the days of the elders that outlived Yahusha. Right. So listen, let me say this real quick. <clears throat> so pretty much the people, they served Yahuwah when, Yahuwah, when, when Joshua reigned. 
And even the elders that were in the time of Joshua, they outlived Joshua, they served Yah as long as when they were alive too. They served Yah wholeheartedly, right? Keep reading. It says, who had seen all the great works of Yahuwah yes. that he did for Yahshua'el. Yes. And Yahushua, the son of Nun, the servant of Yahuwah, died being 110 years old. And they buried him in the border of his inheritance in Timnath Sherek, mm -hmm. in the mountain in the Mount of Ephraim, on the north side of the hill Gaash. And also all that generation were gathered unto their fathers, and there arose another generation after them, uh -huh. which knew not uh -huh. Yahuwah, nor yet the works which he had done now, wait a for Yashuel. For Yashuel. So notice what it says. Here. So then, so after Joshua had died, and those elders that were with Joshua had passed on too, what happened? It says, and in, in, in verse um, ten, it says, and also that generation all died. All the generations. Their that's right. They died. Were gathered to their fathers, and there arose another oh, generation mm. after them, which knew not Yah. Now that that's confuses me, because if your daddy know Yah, you should know Yah. Absolutely. You hear what I said? So the generation before them dropped the ball. Yes. Because that one that said died, and also all the generation that gathered unto their father. That's right. There came another one after them. There came another one after them, right? But this generation, they didn't know Yah. You didn't know him. Mm, mm, you mean mm. tell me all oh, this the Yah has done? Wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. We're talking about Joshua. Had only probably been dead a few years. Mm, mm, mm. Probably less than 20 years Joshua had been dead, right? Mm, mm, mm. You mean tell me Joshua who was in Egypt? Mm, Wait a minute. Mm, mm. Joshua was in Egypt and witnessed Yah's hand delivering him out of Egypt. And you mean tell me a generation that's only a few years after Joshua don't even know who Yahuwah is? Yes, yeah, said they don't even know. They don't they even don't know, know who Yahuwah is. Keep reading now. Mm, mm, Listen. Mm. Okay, so. Read verse 10 one more time. It says, and, all, and also all the generation were gathered unto their fathers, and there arose another, un, uh, another generation after them, which knew not Yahuwah. Yeah. Nor yet the works which he had done for Yashorel. And the children of Yashorel did evil. In the sight of Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And served Balaam. Uh -huh. And they forsook Yahuwah, Eloha, of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Mitzrayim, mm -hmm. and followed other Elohim, of the Elohim of the people, they were round about mm -hmm. them, and bowed themselves unto them, and provoked Yahuwah to anger. And they forsook Yahuwah, and served Baal and Ashtaroth. Mm -hmm. And the anger of Yahuwah was hot against Yahshua'el. And he delivered them into the hands of spoilers that spoiled them. Listen to that. And he sold them into the hands of their enemies round about so that they could no longer stand before their enemies. Whithersoever they went out, the hand of Yahuwah was against them. For evil. For evil. Listen. As Yahuwah hath said, and as Yahuwah hath sworn unto them, and they were greatly distressed wow mm, mm, mm. are you hearing this so they angered yah to the point that yah was completely against them for evil mm. he was against them for evil so yah said yah said everything you do is gonna fail mm, everything mm, you mm. attempt to do is gonna fail every time you think you're gonna get a break i'm gonna have an enemy come out of nowhere he's gonna grab you snatch you haul you off into slavery they're gonna beat you they're gonna kill you you're not going to have not one cent mm, mm, of mm. happiness in your wow. life. You know what that kind of reminds Ooh. me of? That uh, one scene in uh, The Color Purple mm -hmm. when she said, until you do right by me, <laughs> everything you do is going to fail. It, it just reminds me of yeah. that's what Yah yeah. essentially did to us. Yeah. He said, until you do right by me, until you serve me and let go of these other yeah. elements, everything you even think about. Yeah. Everything you put your hand forth to do is going to fail. It's, and you this, know what? Mm -hmm. this is like history yeah. repeating itself over and over yeah. and over again. Yes, it is. It says he delivered them into the hand of spoilers that spoiled them. 
Let's look up that word spoilers. 14. Let's see what that says here. Verse 14. And sold them. Yeah, mm -hmm. sold mm -hmm. them into slavery. See <laughs> wow. that? That's why I said history repeating itself. Sold them into the hands of their enemies round about them. And that they could no longer stand before their enemies. Well, a spoiler is a plunderer, a destroyer, mm. a robber. Mm, mm, mm. Ain't that what's happening wow. today? Yeah, that's exactly what's happening. And so, it's kind of, for me, it's one of those things where you say, okay, um, I see what's happening to my people. Yeah. I don't like it. It upsets me. It yeah. hurts me. It makes me sad. It angers me, right? Yes. But who did this? Yeah. We get angry at the spoiler, but who sent the spoiler? Yeah, who sent them? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's it's really sad when I look at this. And I'm going to tell you, there's some things we have seen, and we've been meaning to bring this message a long time time now because it's, it's when I look at our people and how we are, it seems so hopeless until you just want to just throw in a towel. Yeah. Makes you want to holler and throw up it both make your you, hands. It makes you just say, ah, this is definitely a lot of y'all thing. Y'all have to change this. Yeah, this ain't, change ain't no change this yeah. on our own. We think we, we can march our way and talk, mm -mm. folk talking about, well, I got boots on no. the ground. You got boots on the ground trying to appeal mm -mm. to the system that the Most High put against you. Uh -uh. When I hear folk talking about this stuff with all these different little movements they have, we got boots on the ground. We out here putting in the work. Putting in what work? Only what you do for Yahuwah will last. Mm, mm, mm. Anything you out here doing where you're trying to appeal to the spoiler. Yeah. Did we not just show you that the Most High said, I delivered you into the hands of the spoiler? Wow. So do you think you can march your, your way out of the hands <laughs> you ain't gonna of the spoiler? Your way out of if Yah is the one who sent, yeah. put him over you? Yeah, you ain't going to protest your, 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 mm. your hand, you, you out, of, out of the spoiler's hand. Ain't no way of doing that. No way. No, not if no Yah put you in the hand, you know? If Yah mm -hmm. be for you, who can be against That's you? That's right. If Yah be against you, who can be for you? Who can be for mm -hmm. you? Mm -hmm. There's yeah. one more than one way to look at scripture. Yeah. We always like to look at the good part. If y'all be for me, who could be against me? You know? Yeah. But there's another side to that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You just better make sure when you, you see the thing is when we, we always we like to make that scripture that if y'all be for you, then who can be against you? Hmm. Are you sure y'all is for you? Mm. Mm -hmm. Because we like to quote that scripture, right? Yeah. But are you sure y'all is for you? Because if he for you, you'll see evidence of that. Right. So don't quote the scripture if you if it ain't true. Now you can quote it if you say, okay, I want to make it true. I want to I want to believe this. I want to, but you gotta say, do work right. on me, Abba Yah. You gotta do right though, right? Bring me to that point. <laughs> you, got, <laughs> you, know? you gotta do right. Mm -hmm. Now this next one, I want to show you what's going on here, and I want to show you how Yah thinks, right? Because this next scripture here, I told you I had one for you, right? This next scripture in Joel, Joel, is going to really mm -hmm. show you how Yah thinks. Mm hmm. Now, I'm going to tell you, this ain't pleasant. Listen to this. Joel chapter 1, verse 1 through 7. That's Joel chapter 1, verse 1 through 7. Joel chapter 1, verses 1 through 7 reads as follows. The word of Yahuwah that came to Joel, the son of Pathu Pathuel. Hear this, ye old men, and give ear, all ye inhabitants of the land. Has this been in your days, or even in the days of your fathers? Tell ye your children of it, and let your children tell their children, and their children another generation. Now wait, let's stop right there. Now watch this. Now, pay attention. See, this is how it's supposed to happen. And Yah is saying, okay, I want you to, when, when he does a miracle, right, for you, he expects you to tell it to your children. He expects your children to tell it to their children. He expects them to keep handing it down. This that Yah was was he he was very um powerful in delivering us, right? He did this for us. He did that for us. He healed us. He did all these things. He expect your children to tell their children, and their children to tell so their children, so right? Mm -hmm. But pay attention. I'm gonna tell you what happened when the children of Israel refuse. To talk about the goodness of Yah and what he has done for their fathers and their fathers' fathers. Yah said, that's okay. I'm going to give you something now that I want you to tell. Okay? <laughs> I'm going to give you something there. Since you don't want to tell them about the good that I'm doing, then you run and tell them this. Go tell this. 
Let's okay. give them something to talk, <laughs> talk about. about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Give them something to talk about. Watch, watch this, right? Now, let's read. Let's read that last verse one more time. Verse 3. <laughs> yeah, something start else. Saying. Yeah, he's something else. Watch <laughs> this. You don't play with him. You don't play with him, yeah. It says, tell your children mm -hmm. of it and let your children tell their children and their children another generation. Of what? That which the palmer wood has left has the locust eaten. Uh-huh. And that which the locust has left has the canker worm eaten. Uh-huh. And that which the canker worm has left has the caterpillar eaten. Uh-huh. So, so ain't nothing going to be left, right? Awake, ye drunkards. Mm hmm And weep and howl, all you drinkers of wine, because of the new wine. For it is cut off from your mouth. Mm. For a nation has come upon my land, strong and without number, whose teeth are the teeth of a lion. Uh -huh. And he has the cheek teeth of a lion. He has laid my vine waste and barked my fig tree. He has made it clean, bare, and it and cast it away. The branches thereof are made white. So he just said, mm -hmm. so pay attention. So he's saying, right, since you didn't want to tell, talk about all these miracles that I did in Egypt and all, you don't want to talk about that from generation to generation. Okay, well tell them about me sending these worms to eat up all your crops. See, you and, and that, about that. Yeah, and that, that the locusts don't eat, the canker worm gonna eat. And that, that the canker worm don't eat, the caterpillar gonna eat. Go tell them that then. And tell it from generation to generation. Then. Oh my goodness. Woo! Oh my goodness. <laughs> don't mess with y'all. He ain't one to be played with. He ain't one to be You don't want to talk about my goodness. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna give you something to talk about. Yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Oh, you got to love Abba Yah, don't you? Yah, something else. I love and respect Woo! somebody like that. That's but, our creator. But guess what? That's why you're supposed to fear him. Absolutely. You're supposed to fear him. Absolutely. And see, the problem today is people don't fear Yah. And you know, from time to time, we get people tell us that all we do is fear monger. All y'all do is talk about it. They don't want to hear about yeah. Yah's wrath because yeah. they want you to speak soft things. Tell us some soft things. Well, guess what? Yes. There are a lot of channels yes. out here talking about all kinds of things. Yes. If you want to hear soft things, go to the channel that speaks on soft yes, things. Yes, okay? absolutely. If you want to hear how to dress yourself in yeah. Hebrew garments, go over here. If yeah. you want to hear how you're supposed to wrap your hair, go over there. <laughs> right? If you want to hear how we did things when we kept the feast in our land, like the Bible told us to, go over there and mm -hmm. talk about it over there. That's but right. We are living in a time where mm -hmm. the Most High says we are supposed to cry aloud and spare not. Spare not. The perilous times that the Bible spoke of are up on us. Yes. They are here. Okay? That's right. So those of you who get excited about wrapping your hair and wearing your fringes and garments, okay, that's fine and dandy. But there has got to be some balance. That's right. Somebody has to cry aloud and spare not. Someone has to warn. The Bible says that we are to admonish one another daily. Daily. When I look around, the last thing that's of importance to me mm -hmm. is dressing a certain way. Yeah. Okay? Um, what kind of colors am, am I going to array myself in today? Yeah. What type of matching scarf ensemble am, am, am I going to wear today? Now, get this, y'all. I'm not saying you can't do that. Right. Okay? It is fine. That shouldn't be your main focus. Right. Though, yeah. Some people, they only focus on getting yeah. that outward man dressed up, looking yeah. good, playing the part, acting the part, yeah. but not living the part. Yeah. Yahuwah told us some things are going to go down in these last days. Yeah. That's what I'm preparing myself for. Yeah. I am praying that I am counted worthy to escape the things that are coming up on this earth. Well, I'm going to tell you something. These generations, <laughs> I get now with scripture says that, um, Except the days be short because the way these generations are going from one to the other, mm -hmm. whoo, I would hate to imagine what the generation after this generation today going to mm -hmm. be like. Mm -hmm. Because I'm telling you right now, it is pitiful what I'm seeing. And we're going we to cover it. Yep. We're going to cover it. We're going to talk about some stuff that we have seen and heard. Yes. We're going to show you this. But let's go to this next Proverbs scripture real quick here. This is Proverbs chapter 30, and this is verse 10 through 14. Proverbs chapter 30, verses 10 through 14, reads as follows. Accuse not a servant unto his master. Pay attention. Lest he curse you and you be found guilty. Mm -hmm. There is a generation that curses their father and does not bless their mother. Uh -huh. There is a generation 
that are pure in their own eyes. Wow. And yet is not washed from their filthiness. Wow, listen. There is a generation. Uh-huh. Oh, how lofty are their eyes. Yes. And their eyelids are lifted up. That's right. There is a generation whose teeth uh-huh. are as swords. Swords. And their jaw teeth as knives. Knives. Uh-huh. To devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among men. Wow. Mm-hmm. Do you hear the type of generations that's talking about, right? He said, there's a generation that's going to cuss, curse their father and not bless their mother. Mm-hmm. Well, there's a generation that's mm-hmm. going to be pure in their own eyes, their right? Own but they're going to be filthy as I don't know what, right? Mm-hmm. There's a generation going to be lofty in their own eyes and their eyelids mm-hmm. are lifted up. There's a generation who's, who's, whose teeth are like swords and their jaw teeth are like knives. And they devour the poor from off there. Do you hear what he's saying here? Wow. These are generations of, of, of people that are coming more and more. And this generation we're in now is a perverse generation. generation. I'm telling you, this generation, let me tell you something. The generation today, they have no sense of value. None whatsoever. Do you hear my, they have no None. sense of value. No respect. Let, let me tell you something. Today's gen, gen, um, generation will value a sandwich from a fast food place over the life of a person that's serving them the food. Mm-hmm, yes. So if you get their order wrong, you put no pickles on my sandwich, pow! Yep. Right? Yep. This has happened. This generation have no sense of value. They value a cell phone more than a person's life. A pair of gym shoes. Do you know the number of people that I've seen killed and shot over gym shoes back in the days? Back in the days. In the in Detroit, in the Big D? Mm-hmm. Huh? Shot over mm-hmm. some gym shoes? And jackets. Right, jackets. Cars. Remember the nanny goat coats? Yes, they exactly. They were killing folk over those. Yes, exactly. So this generation, they have no sense of value, right? Let me tell you how this generation is. You could bring this generation mm-hmm. something that's very valuable, a big hunk of gold, and don't and they they, uh, what is this? If, if they can't take it and get money for it right away and, and buy themselves something for it right away, what's what's the point in this? Mm-hmm. Right? They mm-hmm. don't understand it. Today's generation, a person can come and hand them hand them tens of thousands of dollars in the stock in stocks. And the person look at those stocks and say, well, what good is this if I can't do nothing with it? Because they don't understand, right? Now, I'm not saying go invest in stocks or nothing like that, but let me give you a better example, right? Let me give you a better example. I was so shocked and saddened when I saw this video about black farmers. Mm -hmm. And this one black farmer, old fella, Mm -hmm. and he looked like he was probably close to 80 years old. Yes. And he was retiring, so he had children that were... And grandchildren. And grandchildren. So he had grandchildren that were old enough, like... between and His grandchildren were probably in the, between 20s and 30s. And his, and his um, children were in their 50s and, uh, and up, you know, 50s and 60s. And he was, like, almost almost 80 years old. Mm-hmm. And so he had all these, these generations behind him, right? This man had over 100 acres of land with cattle, with so many heads of cattle and a farm. And he was trying to see who was going to, and he who wanted to inherit it. He wanted to give it, hand it down to some of the people in the family. And his his children were like, they didn't want it. His children were like, well, what we got? They, they had houses in the city. You know, I got my house in the city here. You know, I just walk right down to work right here, and I got this, I got that. And they they didn't want it. They didn't want. They couldn't see the value in it, right? And their children was like, oh, what am I do with a farm? Mm-hmm. I mean, what it was I... only one granddaughter who said, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. I, yep. I might do it. I might. But it wasn't a definite thing. Yes. And so the narrative was, he was saying that, um, I just don't know what's going to happen to all, all of my land. I just don't yeah. know. After I pass on, I don't know what's going to happen to it. They don't just sell it. Because yeah. it was a big question mark because it wasn't solidified in nobody's mind that they would go for it. I'd have been like, oh, Granddaddy, right here, right here. Daddy, daddy. I take it, I take it, I take it. Just show me what to do. Show me how to handle these cows. Show me what to do with this land. Show me what, how to work these tractors. Show me, I'll do it. But what's sad? Mm-hmm. What's sad is this generation don't see any value. They don't see in it. land. Uh, you give them a BMW though, 
Oh my goodness, they go out their mind over that. Nice a car, car yeah. that loses value once it drives off yep. a lot. They take more pride in that than you passing them a house eight, or giving them land some land. For the house, so. As a matter of fact, we saw another um, listen another um, situation dealing with heirs' property. Mm -hmm. Now, one that I shared, um, people were losing their land because of heirs' property because of some sneaky under uh, underhanded business that was going on. Right. With people um, searching out. Uh, some of the owners of the heirs' property and buying their percentage of it and then forcing the sale of all of it, okay? Yes. But in this particular case, um, no such thing happened, okay? All of the heirs were, you know, still in possession of the land. And um, some of the younger people that were living on the land and working on the land with their mother, who was, you know, kind of the one for overseeing everything, the interviewer asks them, um, are you going to take over the land when, you know, when you when you get older? Mm -hmm. And they were like, uh-uh, it's too boring out here. You hear this? And one of them said, uh, uh, no, nah, I want to move to Atlanta. As I was looking at this, I was, I had a number of emotions. Mm -hmm. First of all, I said, you know, this is a shame. So I was a little upset. I said, see, this is what's happening right here. Yeah. And then I was saddened. Yeah. I said, man, they just don't see the value in the land. This family, I believe they had over 20 acres or maybe 50. I don't remember exactly, but they had some, some a nice expanse mm -hmm. of land. Yeah. Right. And in asking the younger people if they wanted to, to take over the land after the elders are too old to do anything or pass on. They weren't even interested. You know why? Why do they want to go to Atlanta? Because that's fun city for everybody. Yeah, yeah. That's another sin city. Yeah. So they would rather go somewhere. And then, of course, they say, this is boring. Why does life have to be so uh, about excitement? Mm -hmm. Why don't they the see it as a, a matter or an yeah. issue of survival and wealth and building wealth? Mm -hmm. Because... The, I, can't, I can't say that the, the mother isn't instilling values in them because they are, they're working on the land with her. Yes. But what I see happening that's a little different than back then is all of the eye candy of the world is just popping out at you. Yeah. You see it on the television. You see it on the internet. You see yeah. it everywhere. And when someone is throwing Atlanta and all these celebrities who live there and Disneyland and this yeah. place and that place and um, all of this this world entertainment and internet and video yeah. games that look like movies when all of this stuff is thrown at a young person and you compare that yeah. to um, cultivating an orchard of trees. Do I want to cultivate an orchard of mm -hmm. trees, which is a future investment in the future of my grandchildren and my great grandchildren? Or do I want to go to Atlanta and hang out and have fun mm -hmm. <laughs> to a young person? They can care less about that group of yeah. trees. Okay, until grandma bakes a pie yeah. from the fruit of it, you know. But <laughs> over here, this is a lot more fun yes. to the young people. And so it's hard to compete with that. You, you know, it's amazing. I'm going to tell you what's going on, right? It's, it's just like my wife said. Now, watch this, right? You see, it's, it's not an accident that when you're watching cable TV, which is why we don't really watch cable TV at mm -hmm. all, hardly. We have it, but we don't. It's... I really have it for my mother. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah, know, we, so that she have something to do. But us and the children is very rare. I don't think the. We don't think we played more than a year. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's been a while. When something happened in the news, I turned on CNN to try to see what was going on. And when we first moved here, we were looking at some of the, like the home improvement shows yeah. and the Food Network and stuff like that. But for the most part, we don't get into, we that, don't stuff. Get into that stuff. We don't have time. The children don't even. Yeah. They don't even care about this stuff. They be in there playing the piano. Yeah. And doing other things, on doing art, making videos and stuff yeah. like that. But I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you what's going on though, right? Now, there's some witchcraft going on yes. in those programs, mm -hmm. okay? Because while you're sitting there watching those programs, watch the commercials that come on, mm -hmm. because those commercials are to give you a glimpse. See, the people back in the old days when they were working the farm, they had no commercials always pointing to showing Atlanta or escaping to Disneyland or Las Vegas or or, or, or um, Cedar Point. All oh, these the Disney rides, all these rides and funs and games and showing all this. They didn't see that stuff. Mm -hmm. They didn't have that stuff pulling away at their mind. But today's generation, it's all in their face all the time. You see, if you watch cable, it's in your face all the time. So today's generation is on a farm, or I can go live in one of these big, beautiful places. I mean, look at some of these cities. 
Some of these cities are incredible. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you something. I'll never forget when me and my wife first went to um, Toronto. I was like, man. Right. We were looking around like, wow. <laughs> we went down on the subway and just, I was like, wow. Mm-hmm. I had never been to a city like where I'd been to New York. Okay. Mm-hmm. I did go to Manhattan, New York. But it was like, that was that was the second time I've been to a really big city like that. Mm-hmm. And I saw some of the things like that. I was sitting there and I said, wow. Mm-hmm. Now, wait a minute. There are cities that blow those places off the map. Mm-hmm. You hear what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Cities that are incredibly high tech and everything. Yes. That's all over the world. And let them get the flash and the show and all that stuff. You'd be like, just, oh my goodness. Next thing you know, you'd be just hypnotized. This or a farm. Yeah. This or livestock. This. Well, now, why are they using that witchcraft? Because they know they're trying to get you all huddled into these cities like this, all huddled together in these places like this. Because when the stuff at the fan and you don't have a farm, you don't have a garden, you don't have nothing that you're growing, they know it's going to be hard times. And they know that you're going to have to depend on them. Yeah, and then that, that's when they can come mm-hmm. in they can tell you, okay, well, I'll you tell you what, something. here's a mark for your head, boom. Mm-hmm. You know, here's one for your hand, boom. You know, now you can buy and sell. <laughs> now you can eat, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. That's why they doing this. They, they yeah. but we're too much like man. We ain't even good sheep. We don't follow <laughs> you, right. Kusha, You know, <laughs> we ain't even good sheep. I don't know what you call us, you know. But we just don't follow Yah like we should. We don't follow Yahusha. We don't hear his voice. We're too busy following the world. Want to be like the world. Now you know who else had no sense of value. Esau. Mm-hmm. Didn't he sell his birthright? <laughs> mm-hmm. For what? A piece of meat? Mm-hmm. So you thought your birthright wasn't worth a piece of meat. The that, mm-hmm. that birthright or, or a hamburger? <laughs> Give me the morsel. <laughs> I'm just chipping out when you think about that. I see people just like that. You can your ears. Oh, yeah, guess what? I got an acre of land for you, but you're going to have to till it and work it. Oh, or or, or I got a Happy Meal at McDonald's. Uh, give me the Happy Meal. Mm-hmm. Especially if they tell me, you can't sell the land. You have to work it. You can't sell it, get no money for it. Yeah. You have to work it. That work, I'm going to tell you something. I'm not going to kid you now. Farm life is hard. It's not easy. Mm-hmm. But it's very rewarding. And it's very relaxing yes, once, it the, is. once the, the task is done. Yes. It's very rewarding, like Watchman yes. said, to be able to say, okay, you know what? I need some lettuce. Uh, I don't have to go to the store. That's right. I'll just go out here and get the lettuce. That's right. Need some tomatoes? Let's go out here and get the tomatoes. That's right. Need some chicken? Hey, yeah. and guess what? let's go get one. <laughs> and you get, you get stuff that you know how it's fed. You know mm. how it's grown. You know what's in it. I'm going to tell you something. When you go to the grocery store, you don't know what's in that stuff. Mm-hmm. Half the stuff that's in that. Why do you think people coming out with tumors all the time? People coming out with sicknesses and diseases, sugar diabetes, high blood pressure, all of this stuff, right? We're coming down with all these things because we're eating things that we're getting from the supermarket. And once we're able to completely cut ourselves off from the supermarket, then watch, watch how things change. Yes. You see? Hallelujah. It's a, it's a shame that we, in the land of our captivity, we have to undo, especially for those of us who are old. Yes. Undo decades of damage done from all the stuff that we go yes. down because somebody told us it was food. Yes. Sometimes I tell my children how things were when I was coming up. Yes. You know how my grandmother, she would say, hey, what do y'all want to go to the store for me? We used to all fight to go to the store for yeah. grandma because she gave you a $10 reward for going yes. and back when i was a kid ten dollars was a whole lot of candy a wow. whole lot of junk food sure was. And so <laughs> and this was back in the days where they had the penny candy one cents a piece so one dollar got you a hundred pieces of candy hmm. and they made it so easy and accessible to children hmm. and so ten dollars just got you got a party with ten dollars wow. right and so <clears throat> when i explain this stuff to my children how things were for us I say, but guess what? We had issues with our teeth. Um, we had issues with this. We had issues with that. Yeah. But see, you all ain't got to go through this because we already went through it, and now we can tell you not to do it so you don't have to go through it. That's right. Listen to us, <laughs> you know. We know what we're talking about. 
Yes. My husband too. had recently had a really bad toothache, a horrible toothache, yes. you know. And we said, this is what happens yes. when things happen to your teeth. So take care of them. That's right. You see? That's right. And so lessons that we teach our children, we expect them to teach their children. That's right. And so on and so on. That's right. <clears throat> you know, it's amazing. I, I, I want to get back to this here, too, because I want to say this here, too. You got to teach these things to your children because you don't want your children to grow up and be a part of this perverse generation. Right, you don't want them to grow up and be a part of this generation that's all off, right? Mm -hmm. Now, one other thing I want to say this about this generation: this generation has no love. Mm -mm. The love of just this, this generation have waxed cold. No love whatsoever. Mm -hmm. This generation have no morals. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna prove it to you, right? Because <sighs> you who should call them out on it. They they don't have any morals. Mm -hmm. They'll 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 sin so quickly. Without even a thought. Won't no even, fear. They don't even have to think about it to sin. Because they have no morals. And they have no sense of righteous judgment. This is why he said in that scripture that they view themselves righteous in their own eyes. In their own eyes. In their own eyes. They don't see, but, but he said, but you're filthy. Your sins are, are filthy all on you. Right? Mm -hmm. But in their own eyes. But where they they viewed themselves as being righteous. They're like, what? What? What are you talking about? That's because they have no sense of righteous value, <clears throat> not righteous judgment or value. Let me say this to you, right? Now watch this, right? So, you tell a person, you say, hey, look here, you know. Uh, person says, I'm 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 going here. I'm going here. I want y'all to hear what I'm gonna say here, right? So you tell a person, you say, hey, look here. Um, you see this guy? He homeless. He got nowhere to stay. Okay. Got no work, no money, homeless, nowhere to stay. You tell this homeless fella, see, I'll tell you what, man. Tell you what. I got a house over here on such and such, Martin Luther King Boulevard. Okay? Now, what I need you to do is I need somebody in that house. I really need somebody to be in the house because I don't want nobody to break in there. You know why I, why I did the house is vacant. So, but the house needs some work. Mm -hmm. So, I'll tell you what. I'm going to let you come. And live in this house, and in exchange, I'm a, I want you to do some work, fix the house up, keep work the on the house, cut. keep the grass cut, and guess what? I'm also pay you. So you gotta have a place to stay, and I'm gonna pay you some money so you can have food to eat and everything. And all I'm asking you to do is stay in the house and help me fix it up, right? Today's generation. Mm. Are you just trying to use me? You trying to get over on me? Mm. <laughs> What do I get out of this? How come I can't put, can I put my name on the deed? Mm. Do you hear this? You were homeless and didn't have nothing. But this generation, they don't have no kind of righteous judgment. They have a twisted sense of, of, of judgment. Very mm. twisted. Very twisted. To me, if, if I was a homeless person, then, and look, let me tell you something. That guy would come back to that house and look like a mansion. You know why? Because I'm like, he ain't going to want to let me go. Mm. He's going to be like, oh, man, this guy here, he works hard. I got another job for you. Got another, matter of fact, he may even give you a home. You hear mm. what I'm saying? Yes. But today's generation, they got no righteous judgment. They got no <laughs> sense of value. See, the problem is, too, Yeah. that person would say, well, why can't you just let me stay in the house? Why do I have to do anything for it? Why can't you just, be, um, just yeah. let me stay in the house for free? And the guy's like, well, I want to get something out of this, too. So you just want to get something out of it, right? Mm -hmm. Do that's, you? How, that's how this generation thinks. Mm -hmm. But you know what's funny? I saw um, it was a white couple. Uh -huh. uh, they had some children. And this is different than an um, Amish couple. I shared a um, story about them right. um, last year, I believe it was. But I saw another couple. Um, they were a Christian couple. And they had, I think, two or three children or something like that. And a guy at their church... Um, had a house that was just mm -hmm. kind of sitting empty, but it needed some work. And they were homeless. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I think they were living with one of their relatives um, for a period of time, but yeah. they wanted their own space. Yes. Husband, wife, children. And so they made a deal with the brother at their church. Uh, he says, well, if you, all, if you all fix up the house and do this and do that, you can live in the house. And in their minds, they said, wow. That's a win-win. Yes. We need a place to stay. A win-win. You have a house that needs to be fixed. Yeah. And so we are the solution to your problem. That's you right. You are the solution to my to our problem. Right. Right? But why is it that our people feel like, 
Well, I don't want to do nothing to you. I don't want to keep your grass cut. I don't want to paint this house. I don't want to lay no carpet. I don't want to do nothing. You know what but I want to do? Can't you just let me stay here? I want to just move in your home <laughs> that you fix up. And all I want to do is just put my feet up. Matter of fact, you bring me food. You know, a Negro <laughs> like that, I'll grab him by the back and hit the head and toss him. Get your butt out of here. <laughs> Woo, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you, I know the mind of our people. I know how we think. Mm -hmm. You see, I know exactly how we think. But it's this not is, all of us, though. No, not all of us. Not all of us. That's right. Not all of us, but it's a good number of them, yes, right? Enough. This is This is why you can start a business and say, you know what? I'm going to sell. Let me see that bottle there. The other one. The other one. Yeah, that, that oil. You can say, you know what? I'm going to start selling this very nice castor oil. Put my own labels on it. I'm going to start selling this. You know, I got myself a, a, a wholesale place See, that I can it, get it now from. Now it's on your hands. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> That's why I was trying to give you that wave over here. <laughs> and so I'm going to sell this, you know, to, to, to people and put my label on. I got this business. I'm put it up in here, y'all. Look, look, I'm selling this oil here. I got a good price on it. I'm, I'm selling a really good deal here. And people look, mm, mm. why don't you just <laughs> give it away for free? Mm -hmm. mm. You robbing people. Mm. But wait a minute. But if you need some oil, you're going to go to somebody else of another nation and you'll mm -hmm. spend money for them right away, right? Mm -hmm. But when it's one of your people that starting a little business and they mm -hmm. trying to come up with mm -hmm. something to make a little mm -hmm. money for themselves so they ain't got to work for the man, right? Nope, you despise them. Mm -hmm. And you say he's robbing the people. Uh -huh. I tell you, woo -wee. And so, this generation. This generation. I'm going to go to Acts 2 and 40. Yes, listen to this. <laughs> Acts 2 and 40 says, and with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this perverse nation. Mm, mm, mm. Or untoward generation, it mm -hmm. says in King James. King verse. James, yes. Untoward generation. Now, this when you untoward look at this, generation. Now, now, let me show you something. Save yourself. You hear that? It says save yourself Listen. from them. In other words, avoid them. That's right. Save yourself mm, from mm, them. Mm, mm. Get away That's from right. them. That's right. Get away from them. Now watch this. I want Don't you trust to... them. <laughs> That's verse 40. Now watch mm -hmm. this here. I want to show you something, right? Let's look at that in the Strong's Untoward and see what that says there. Mm -hmm. That's verse 40, was it? Mm -hmm. The Cephas says perverse. Perverse. Call perverse. Perverted. Wow. Mm, mm, mm. And here it says, see if it means perverted. Crooked. Crooked. <laughs> Untoward, forward, uh, uh, figurative, uh. perverse. Ain't that something? Mm, mm, mm. Wow. So as you see, it's a generation of them that's like this. So he said, save yourself from them. Don't be a part. Don't go down with them. Right? Wow. You know what Watchmen and I were talking about earlier today? It's kind of scary. Um, yeah. But get this, y'all. It's not just our people. Uh, we were talking to a Gentile recently, and he was saying, you know what? The younger generations, they just don't want to do this kind of work listen, anymore. Listen, listen. He says, you can, you'd be hard-pressed to find any of them that will do this kind of work. They, they're they just not interested. You know, since we've been here, too. This guy was heard, a builder. Listen, y'all. Yeah, we've heard a number of farmers, too, who have said that the younger generations, they can't get nobody to come and work on their farms. Wow. So yes. it's not just... Um, so-called black people is even right. in these other nations but now some of them are a little different though because we do know some farmers okay where their sons and their daughters are taken over yes okay they're taking over the family business the farm yeah. the whole operation as a matter of fact they're not just um picking up where papa and mama left off they're yes. actually expanding we've met some personally yes since we've been here where the the child or the the um the children of these older people they are taking it above and beyond that's right uh, there's a number of businesses where uh, the sons are literally just i mean the the whole thing is expanding like this yes now the most high said he's gonna use these other nations to make us jealous he did yes. say that and it's yes. working okay <laughs> but it still saddens me that for our people, yes. when you are trying to hand them something, you're trying to hand your children some land, don't want it. Don't want it. You're trying to say, look, um, if you do this, I'll do this. You know, mm -hmm. let's let's help one another. Yes. And they're saying, no, I don't want to help you, but I want you to help me. Yes. What kind of wickedness is that? 
Yeah. Th- that's why it's, it calls them, it says, deliver yourselves. Mm-hmm. Save yourselves from this perverse, crooked wow. generation. Yep. Save yourselves from them because many times I hear this on the internet and every time I hear it, mm-hmm. it just, it rubs me the wrong way. Yeah. Usually when I hear it, I say something about it. Yeah. When I hear folks say, we are all we got. And whenever I read that anywhere, the first thing that comes to my mind, I say, well, we in trouble then. <laughs> if, if we all we got, we are in trouble. <laughs> because uh, I don't know if you've seen the we that you're talking about. I, I see the we around here that you're talking about. And if this we that I look at is all we got, then you might as well just, just go find yourself a casket and lay down in it. Yep, just lay down, dig your own hole yeah. first, put the casket down in there, jump down and close the door. That's right. If we are all we if got. If we are all we got. Especially when you look at stories like this on a daily basis. Woman gets her stimulus check, man wants half, woman says no, pow, pow, pow. And you know, this Another one. Woman gets a stimulus check, man wants some, woman says no, beats her, burns her house down. If we are all we got, then we are in trouble. I, I'm telling you, we in trouble because I, this stimulus check thing is, I've been like, I, I mean, the way these guys are beating and killing these women over these stimulus checks. Over money. I'm like, man, hmm. it's almost like it's some type of stimulus demon or something. <laughs> <laughs> mm, mm, mm. Man, I mean, I'm, I'm, I don't understand it. No. Mm-mm. Wow. But again, the Most High says, or the Word says, Save yourselves from yeah. this perverse, crooked mm, generation. Mm, mm, mm. You wow. see, we got young people out here crooked, y'all. Yeah. They're perverted. They're perverse. They're wicked. They are righteous in their own eyes. That's right. This is why that young woman wrote the note, Dear Oprah, because she yeah. wanted to appear to someone who had a more secular mindset. Right. Or appeal, should I say. She wanted to appeal to Oprah because right. that was the, the, um, the end thing to do for her. I need to tell you about my strict parents. Dear Oprah, uh, we went to church. We did this. We did that. And so she wanted her rebellion to be known around the world because she knew yeah. her her flesh instinctively knew that the world would applaud yep. her rebellion against her parents. Against her parents, yeah. And they're like, good for you, young lady. Yep. Tear away from those vipers. Your parents are the vipers. Yep. They knew She knew that the world would applaud. But you know what's amazing? When young people get out here and they get in all kinds of trouble, who do they call? Mommy, Daddy, <laughs> I need your help. Mm-hmm. I need your prayers. I need your money. I need the safety of your roof again. Can I come home? Mm-hmm. But I, I, I thought I was too strict. I thought I was getting on your nerves. So you want to come home now? See, that's what happens yeah. when you have a generation out of bounds that's being raised by a wicked and perverse Society. Yeah, it kind of remind me of the prodigal son. You, give me all I got coming yep. now. I yep. want to go out here in the world. Yes. I want to view the world. Mm-hmm. Yet, yeah, mama, da- daddy, I see you got your palace here, and you got this going on. You got servants and all this, but I want my inheritance now. Nah, I want to go out here and do my thing. You know, I hear they got this going over in this town. This over. So he gave me his inheritance. He went out and blew it all. Got to the point he messed up so bad. He started. He, he's looking sleeping, he's with, sleeping the with the pigs. In the flock. No, he got to the point. He said, "I, I, I gotta go home. I gotta go I home. Gotta go home." That's that's usually what happens. Yeah, you go out there and get all messed up. But notice it said he, he had came to come to, to himself. himself. What? Okay, so then he was out of himself. Then. Yeah, that's he was right. out of his own you senses, right? Mind. Yep. He was out of his mind, <laughs> <laughs> right? And then he came to his right mind. That's what's going on with today's generation. They're out of their mind, and they don't really realize it. Mm-hmm. You know, today's generation is out of their mind. But see, th- what they don't understand is more and more, the Most High is revving up judgment. So some of y'all ain't going to make it back home. Yeah. You understand that? That's some right. of you will not make it back home. And I'm not just talking about teenagers. I'm talking about some of your 20-something and your 30-something. That's right. You know, because unfortunately, you got people in their 30s acting like they're teenagers. Yeah. You see? Don't have an established life, don't have a plan, don't have anything going on for themselves. Outside of themselves, they have everything yes. established where uh, they either have some type of something else going on where somebody else is responsible for their life and living, yes. right? That is a bad place to be if you are unable to do for self. 
That's see? right. And this is why so many people are pushing this more and more. That's right. It's time to fortify your life. Fortify your life. But young people are like, no, I don't need to do that. I just want to have fun, fun, fun. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I thank God that we ain't all we got. Yeah, me too. We have Yahuwah. Me too. We have Yahuwah. Mm -hmm. We have his Yahuwah. That's right. Yahushua Mashiach. And we have his yeah, Ruach yes, HaKadosh. Yes, you yes. know? And we have all the hosts of heaven and the angels hallelujah. too. Hallelujah. I'm glad we got more than we. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> I'm glad we got more than we. I would just, if, if we were all we got, I, I would literally say, okay, Abiyah, let me just take my final sleep, you know? Yeah. If we were, because when you look at the wickedness of our people, and how ruthless we are towards one another. Yes. If this was it and there was no Yahuwah, I would be, I would just let me go ahead and go to sleep. Yeah. Give me my dirt nap. You know what I'm saying? Because our people are just yes, so wicked. One of these days, mm -hmm. I don't know if we will ever tell it, but this dream that Watchmen had not long ago, oh my goodness, that dream is so disturbing. It that was dream so was disturbing. so bad. It was That dream was so bad. Until his heart was racing, when my he heart up. was racing so bad. I, 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 I knew mm. I needed to get out of that dream. I couldn't tell it was wasn't a dream. Mm -hmm. I thought it was real. Then finally, when I finally got away in the dream, and I, I realized, I, I, I ended up tapping him, and um, and she woke me up. I was like, oh, I was so glad she brought me up out mm -hmm. of that dream. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, that dream showed me you can't trust nobody. When he was explaining the dream, I was getting so grieved in my spirit. And then he went to go explain it again later on in that day because it was still bothering his mind. He had me bothered all that day. I'm telling you, all that day it had me bothered. I said, baby, I can't hear no more. I don't want to hear no more because I was being so grieved and just upset. Even now, just thinking about it, I need to move on because that dream was so disturbing. The dream was that bad. And so this is the, the Most High is telling us, look, what, was, what did we speak on last week? We were talking about um, yeah. people, um, you, you can't trust people, you yeah. know, and how people are not who they say they are. You know what I'm saying? And just uh, just the way people are, you've got to be very, yeah. very careful. Yeah, you got to be careful. You got to be very, very careful. That's right. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Let's go to, uh, where are we? Luke, Luke chapter 16. And I want you to pay attention to this one. This mm -hmm. one here is very catchy. I'm, I'm curious to see how the Cephas reads this one. Okay. Because when I read it in King James, I was like, okay, what am I hearing here? Come on. Okay, so this is Luke chapter 16, mm. verses 1 through 13. Uh -huh. And he said also unto his Talmudim, there was a certain rich man which had a steward, and the same was accused unto him that he had wasted his goods. And he called him and said unto him, how is it that I hear this of you? Give an account of your stewardship. For you may no longer steward. Then the steward said within himself, What shall I do? For my Lord takes away from me the stewardship. I cannot dig. To beg I am ashamed. I am resolved what to do, that when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. So he called every one of the Lord's debtors unto him, and said unto the first, how much do you owe unto my Lord? And he said, A hundred measures of oil. And he said unto him, Take your bill and sit down quickly and write fifty. Then said he to another, And how much do you owe? And he said, An hundred measures of wheat. And he said unto him, Take your bill and write fourscore. And the Lord commended the unjust steward because he had done wisely. For the children of this world are in their mm -hmm. nation wiser than the children of light. Mm. Wow. You hear this? And I say unto you, make to yourselves friends of the mammon of unrighteousness, that you may, that when ye fail, they may receive you into everlasting habitations. He that is faithful in that which is least is faithful also in much mm -hmm. and he that is unjust in the least is unjust also in much <clears throat> if therefore ye have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon who will commit to your trust the true riches yes and if you have not been faithful in that which is another man's 
who shall give you that which is your own? Wow. Mm, mm, mm. Now, watch this, right? Wow. I'm going to say this to you, right? So, mm. Yah has entrusted into your hands time. You hear what I said? Mm -hmm. Time. Right? Are you wasting it? Mm, mm, mm. He has trusted into your hands, right? Abilities and skills mm. and knowledge and other things that he has given to you. Mm -hmm. Have you wasted it? Huh? Mm, mm, mm. What have you done with it? Huh? He has put these things into your hands. <sighs> he has given you children even. Huh? Giving you ministries, right? Giving you all kinds of things at your hands, and he expects you to be a good steward with these things. Yes. Mm, mm, mm. You know what tripped me out? Yeah. When I read this part right here, it says, For the children of this world are in their nation wiser than the children of light. Wow. We have observed that. Yes, we have. We have observed that. That's why we made an example of talking about how when they were asking um, these little black children if they wanted the land, they were like, no, it's too boring. No, it's, I want to go to Atlanta. But what we've witnessed around here Listen. is the children of these other nations. They Just know, recently. They know the value of some land. Exactly. Listen. Just recently, we bought um, this one um, couple. We didn't, we didn't know what they looked like or anything about them until they got here. And we were so surprised when they got here. It was a young white couple. Mm -hmm. um, they had a bunch of bales of hay. And it was still when it was still winter. And we needed some more um, hay to um, feed the animals. So we, we, liked it. we purchased some hay from them. Right. And uh, they offered to deliver it. And we said, sure. Because, you know, um, mm -hmm. we were just grateful for that. But anyway, when they got here with the hay and they were unloading it for us, um, the young lady was, she was explaining how when she was a little girl, <laughs> you know, Listen. she was saying, uh, I've been doing this because I was looking at how she was throwing them bales of hay. I was like, <laughs> oh my goodness. Now she looked like she's in her <laughs> mid twenties or something like that. I'm a grown man and I wasn't throwing them bales of hay like that, you know? And she said, I've been doing this since I was a little girl on my, on my daddy's farm. And she said, now me and my husband, we got, um, such and such acres over here. And we got another farm with such and such acres. So they got two farms. Yeah. Okay. And we're talking about young white, a young white couple. They got two farms. And she's talking about all the chickens and the livestock yeah. and all the stuff they had. And I was sitting there like, wow. And so when I see this scripture, I see this scripture says that the yeah. children of these other nations are of, the, of this world are wiser than the children of light. That just really brought it home for me that yeah. they see the value in land and carrying on the family legacy. Yeah. But our generations of children, many of them don't want to have nothing to do with no nothing land. Nothing to do with it. And that is truly sad. You know, it's amazing. <clears throat> I've seen it too many times where I've seen um, uh, people that have businesses, you mm -hmm. know. Um, uh, one guy I know that has this business and they, they deal with tractors. They repair a lot of the farm equipment and tractors. Big time business. Big business, right? Mm -hmm. And daddy is retiring. And guess who's taking over? His son. His son. His son looked like he's only in his 30s. Mm -hmm. He's taking over. Right? Been working for his father for years. Yep, for years. And same with, I uh, knew a, a guy that was a plumber. Mm -hmm. You know, he was getting old. Who was taking over the plumbing business? His son. He had four, th th three or four vans. Plumbing business. His son taking over the business, right? Mm -hmm. It's a, a, a guy who's a carpenter here. His 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 son is learning the, the business of carpentry, you know, building homes and stuff mm -hmm. like that, right? But today's a lot of these generations, they, they don't want to walk in the steps of the parents. They know, know they see what the parents do. Nah, I got another I got my way. own path. Okay. I got my own way, you know. And then where did, where was that um, behavior learned from? Yeah, where it comes from? The worldliness of the world. Yep. Okay, because even in these other nations, you have that too. But you do have those who say, you know what? I see the value in Papa's hundred acres. Yeah. And so I'm not letting it get away from me. Yeah. You know, so you do have those. But for the most part, this this generation yeah. of young people have no values whatsoever. Yeah. They are being raised by the internet. Yeah. Right? Cell phone. All of these challenges that yeah. they're putting out here, wasting their time on pranking and doing this. One young man... Just lost his life on a prank. 
Mm-hmm. It was a, a white guy who used to go into the hood doing all of these different pranks on black people. He, he ended up getting shot and killed. Are you, you serious? Mm-hmm. Wow. So, oh, so much time and effort is put mm. into this life, the, the fun of things, the entertainment, uh, getting views and getting likes and appealing to a wide audience of um, people who like your pranks and your jokes and all of this. But what mm-hmm. about fortifying your life for what is to come? Mm-hmm. Okay. Wow. Hallelujah. This is well, this is something right else, now, family. This is something. You know, we got boy, these other nations, like I said before, <clears throat> they, they know the value of some things. They know mm-hmm. the value of bartering and and, 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 and accumulating things and they yes. know the value of all of that stuff. I I'm telling you, we've been places we've seen people doing things that I, me and my wife have seen enough over the past two years mm-hmm. of people doing things, these other nations, mm-hmm. to the point where we sit back and say, my goodness, <laughs> what in the world? Mm-hmm. Go to that person's house, they say, oh yeah, come over here to my barn, this is where it's at. You're going to get something on Facebook, Mark, but you go in this barn, and barn look like it's big as a city. <laughs> with so much merchandise and you sit and say, you got more merchandise than Walmart up in here. It's like, right. man. So we asked him, are you in the liquidation business? Oh, yeah, I get truckloads. From... We used to do that. That's yeah. why we're intrigued by it. We used to buy the truckloads and all of that kind of stuff, too, when we lived back in Michigan. And we did a little bit um, when we moved further south. But, you know, we are, we're not. You can't do it now because yeah. we don't have any help. Yeah. You know, but, but these, these people. These were, people I'm telling you. When we saw the stuff that they had in this big giant warehouse, we were like, I said, oh my goodness. But it wasn't just that. I, we'd have been places where people got homes with, with, with um, warehouses on the land mm-hmm. and things that they're doing. You said, they said, man, you doing what? You doing this? You doing that? You know, got all kinds of businesses. Uh, uh, I wish you had one of them lathe things that that guy made over here. I don't have one. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, I tell you, this guy that with this lathe machine that's making these things, I tell you. And he's selling them like this, just selling them like crazy, mm-hmm. you know. And then I'm seeing people doing all kinds of things, just hustling, and the kids joining in on it. And but 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 when it comes to Judah, too much work in that. Too man. much work. I'll be honest, have too mercy. Much work. Mm-hmm. Have mercy. But the scripture told us that these times would come. Yeah. That um, these generations were going to get worse and worse. It called them perverted, yeah. crooked. Oh, 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 let's, we're going we gonna to cover that. Let's go to these next ones. We ain't going to be with you long, but we want to cover these next ones. This is Luke chapter 11, and let's read verse 29 through 32. Luke chapter 11, verses 29 through 32 reads as follows. And when the people were gathered thick together, he began to say, this is an evil nation. Mm, evil generation, right? Go ahead. They seek a sign. And there shall no sign be given, but the sign of Jonah, the prophet. For as Jonah was a sign unto the inhabitants of Nineveh, so shall also the son of Adam be to this nation. His generation. The queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment and the men of this nation and condemn them. For she came from the utmost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Shalomah. And behold, a greater than Shalomah is here. Mm -hmm. The men of Nineveh shall rise up in the judgment with this nation and shall condemn it. Mm -hmm. For they, there, I'm sorry, for they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And behold, a greater than Jonah is here. No man, when he has lighted a candle, puts it in a secret place, neither under a bushel, but on a menorah that they which come in may see the light. Okay. The Was that it? Yeah. yeah okay. It's going to 32. Okay. Mm-hmm. So basically what I want to show you here is that he, he <clears throat> basically said this is a very evil generation. Mm-hmm. And, it said, and greater than Solomon is here. Greater than, 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 than Jonah is here. And y'all can't even receive me. <laughs> he was talking about himself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> greater than Jonah, than Jonah and Solomon is here in front of you. And you can't even receive me. That's how wicked this generation was. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. Let's go to Luke again. This is chapter 9, verse 27 through 42. Now, this one is deep. I may help you read this one here. Okay. Luke chapter 9, verses 27 through 42. <clears throat> but I tell... I'm sorry. Yeah. 
But I tell you the truth, there be some standing here which shall not taste death till they see the kingdom of Yahuwah. And it came to pass, about an eight days after these sayings, he took Kepha and Yachanan and Yaakov and went up into a mountain to pray. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered, and his raiment was white and glistering. And behold, there talked with him two men, which were Moshe and Eliyahu, who, passed, who appeared in glory and spoke of his decease, which he should accomplish at Jerusalem. But Kepha and they that were with him were heavy with sleep. And when they were awake, they saw his glory and the two men that stood with him. And it came to pass, as they departed from him, Kepha said unto Yahusha, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here, and let us make the kakoth, one for you, and one for Moshe, and one for Eliyahu, not knowing what he said. While thus he spoke, there came a cloud and overshadowed them, and they feared as they entered into the cloud. And there came a voice out of the cloud, saying, this is my Yaqet, the elect one, hear him. And when the voice was passed, Yahusha was found alone, and they kept it close, and told no man in those days any of those things which they had seen. Okay, I'll take it from here. <clears throat> okay, and when it came to pass that on the next day, when they were come down from the hill, much people met him, and behold, a man of the company cried out, saying, Master, I beseech thee, look upon my son, for he is mine only, my only child. And lo, a spirit taketh him, and he suddenly crieth out, and teareth him, and it teareth him, that he falleth again, and bruiseth him hardly, departeth from him. And he besought let me speed this up here. And he besought, and he besought thy disciples to cast him out, and they could not. And Yahushua said unto them, O faithless and perverse gener generation, how long should I be with you and suffer you? Bring thy son hither. And as he was yet coming, the devil threw him down and tear him. And Yahushua rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the child and delivered him again to his father. Now, I'm going to tell you what part that kind of got me here. Keep, when he said, oh, faithless and perverse generation, mm. he was talking to his apostles. Mm -hmm. Did you realize that? Yes. Because it was his apostles that brought him. So he looked at the apostles. Now, here y'all are under Yahushua, listening to him, following him around, listening to his teachings, and you wasn't getting it. To the point where he looked at them, he said, Oh, perverse generation, how long shall I be Faithless. with you? Faithless. Mm -hmm. and Faithless and perverse? Wow. I bet the apostles were probably like, Oh, man. Mm -hmm. They probably felt like crawling on the rock. <laughs> yes. So imagine if he said that to them. Yeah. Then we better humble ourselves, right? Yeah. Now, those are the kind of things that make you really understand and appreciate who Yah is. Yeah. He he doesn't play, you know, and we can't say that enough. I'm, I'm going to tell you something, right? We don't have time to be half-stepping. We I, just don't have time. I, I wouldn't even know what it, what, the, what, the, what it would be like if Yahushua in the body was around us. Because we would be so ashamed. I, you, who knows what he would say? <laughs> I mean, he called them he a was, faithless and perverse it's generation. The, it's the way he looked at Peter and called him Satan. Mm. He said, get thee behind me, Satan. Father, have mercy. <laughs> I know, I, 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 I probably couldn't even look up on him. I'd be, like, be scared. Like, I, I'm telling you. <laughs> this is amazing when you yes. think about it. Let's go to this next one now. Mm -hmm. This is Luke chapter 7 now. But you know what, though? That's why the scripture said it's because of the fear of Yah. Yeah. That men depart from, from evil. evil. And right. see, this generation today, no they, fear. They, they, they have no fear. They don't want to be afraid of anything. And they they even say little smart things like, um, if I have to fear God, then I definitely don't want to serve him. That's you can right. say that junk all you want to, 
he will bring you to your knees or put you in the grave. Yes, he will. That's how it works. That's how it works. You yeah. see, the scripture says, don't fear him who can destroy your body, but fear him who can destroy your body and soul in hell fire. That's right. And so right now we are living among a generation of people, not just the young. You even have some rebellious older people from the That's generation right. before who sit back and say, you know what? I don't have to fear God. Mm -hmm. I don't have to fear no creator. Who does he think he is? You have people who literally think like that. This is why... You'll see people cursing them, yeah. talking about F him and doing all this kind of stuff because they have no fear, no respect, no love yeah. for that's, the most high, no reverence. That's this generation. Yeah, I've seen so many people um, just say some horrible things about the most high. Yeah. Horrible things. And I say to myself, that person just don't know. I, when I was, obviously let me tell you, don't know. When I was a child... <laughs> I, I I was afraid. I'm gonna be honest with you. I was literally afraid to say certain things, and even my friends were. Mm -hmm. I mean, one, one of my friends would say something, and we all be like, "Oh man, you better, better take that back, that, man. man. Take you better it take back. that back, man. God gonna strike you down." And we, we oh man, I'll take it back. I'll take it back. I'll take it back. That's how we were as kids. Even mm -hmm. my friends were like that, right? Yeah. When we were young. But boy, when we became teenagers, I started hearing young people doing and say things mm. that you, it's like, man, they ain't like, like we were, you know, when I was These young. These young people, they, they, they'll make you a little bit afraid. Yeah. They'll make you think twice before yeah. you say something to them, you know? It used to be a day and time where you could say, hey, hey, young man, don't yeah. do that. Hey, young lady, don't do that. But right now, you're kind of nervous to do that yeah. because one of them might blow your brains out. I, I'll never forget the day with my brother, my brother Tony years ago when we, we were young. He was um, in his 20s, but he had went somewhere, and he came back with nothing on but his pants in the snow. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what happened, man? Just his, just his pants on. Sure. Shirt gone, coat gone, shoes gone, everything gone, right? But mm -hmm. just his pants. What happened? Some young thug looked like he was number 12 years old, mm -hmm. put a gun on him, and took all his stuff. Mm, mm, mm. In the city of Detroit, y'all, that's where we're from. Twelve years old. Mm -hmm. You hear me? And I'll never forget the day that um, my mama came home hurt, mm. snow on her and stuff, and she was she just looking all sad and tears mm -hmm. in her eyes. Mm -hmm. What happened, mama? Some guy pushed her down in the snow and took her purse. Mm, mm, mm. You know me and my brothers, we went out. Mm -hmm. We went out, boy. We prowl. went out like a posse. We went out. We, we were looking for that dude, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. But I'm telling you, this is the kind of stuff that we talk about. This generation is mm -hmm. they got. Woo. They got some problems, and 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 yet you still have people talking about we all we got. So let me say it again. Show them some love. We all we got. Then we in trouble. <laughs> okay. Uh, show them some love. Show them some love. We show them love, you know. But they. And, but when you show love, sometimes the yeah. life goes slamming in your yeah. back. Yeah. That's what we've got to understand. You who yeah. keep on warning us, but we got yeah. this. this um, ignorant mentality yeah. to where because we're in the land of our captivity we we feel like okay it's us against them no you got to understand that the most high is the one who put us yeah. here to begin with we start at the beginning of this lesson off reiterating that because we've said it many times before yeah that we are here because yah put us here mm -hmm. and why did he put us here was well, because we were so wonderful and so obedient kind and loving towards mm -hmm. one another mm -hmm. was it because we were so precious no no nope. no he put us here because our people are crooked, mm -hmm. wicked, perverse. And I, I know some of you cringe. tell me, people, are people, <laughs> they are, they are, they are. The word, is, tell, the word say it, right? <laughs> we, on, we only say what y'all done already said. Right. So if you didn't know it and it's a shock to you that our people are crooked, well, where you live? Well, yeah. What, what, what news do you watch? Exactly. You know, because I done been around them and I know what to think. I know what the, what's going on. I know what I've seen. I know what I've been through. And I know what some of you've been through at the hands of your own people. So. Yes. And so why do we feel the need to talk about this today, family? Yeah. Take a look around. Look around. Every time you turn on the news, yep. betrayal, the spirit of betrayal. Yeah, that's what is we talked there. about. Yep. The spirit of betrayal, the, the backstab yep. stabbing, the murder, yeah. the spirit of hatred. The scripture says, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax yeah. cold. So if you want to stay in La La Land, 
like I said, go find a message about love and happiness. <laughs> okay, but we deal in reality yeah. here. The scripture tells us perilous times are going to come. They are That's here, right. family. And we're going to cry aloud. And spare and not. spare not. And lift yeah. up our voices like a trumpet in Zion. Yep. And show our people their transgressions. Their transgressions. That's right. Hallelujah. That's what we have to do, family. That's what we got to do. Hallelujah. This is Luke chapter 7, and this is verse 31 through 35. Okay, verses 31 through 35 reads as follows. And Adonai said unto, I'm sorry, and Adonai said, Whereunto then shall I like the men of this nation? This generation. Of this generation. Uh-huh. To what are, are they, they like? like? Listen, listen now. Uh, go ahead. They are like unto children sitting in the marketplace. And calling one to another and saying, we have piped unto you and you have not danced. We have mourned to you and you have not wept. For Yachanan the immerser came neither eating bread nor drinking wine. And ye say he has a devil. The son of Adam is coming eating and drinking. And you say, behold, a gluttonous man and a wine bibber, a friend of the publicans and sinners. But wisdom is justified of all her children. Now notice what he said here, right? He said, he said, what are you gonna like unto the children of the of this generation, right? He said, children of this generation are perverse, pretty much is what he's saying. They're messed up in their thinking because John the Baptist, Jacques and I the Baptist, the immerser, came to you eat not eating or even drinking. And you said he had a devil, right? Mm-hmm. And here the Messiah come to you, right? Drinking and eating, and you call him what? A, a wine bibber and a gluttonous man. Mm, mm, mm. You hear that? The young people today yeah. are just like these people that they're talking about. Yeah. They have no righteous judgment. No righteous judgment. When you try to be righteous, like I continue to tell you all about the story of the, the mother who told her uh, daughter who likes women yeah. that that's against the Bible, that's against the Most High. Instead of them or the the host agreeing with the mother said no mother you're wrong yeah you're wrong you you the one with the devil yeah that's how this generation is yeah and that is what is promoted and so when you try to stand for any form of righteousness yeah you are the one that's called the devil that's right you that's are right. out of touch you, you are out of touch. touch you you ain't in with the times the time says it's okay to do this and it's okay to do that. You don't want just going against everything. You're the problem. That's why the scripture says, woe unto them that call good evil and evil good. Evil good. That's right. They can't tell the difference. Can't tell the difference. Mm-hmm. But you know what? I got to say this. I meant to say this early on in the lesson. Mm-hmm. The older generations are dying off. Yeah. <clears throat> and they are not being replaced fast enough or at a large enough quantity to where you can yeah. expect anything good in the future. It's going to be so bad. And, and, and you know what's amazing? The Listen. younger generations are applauded today. They say they're not like their, their uh, forefathers. They're not as if it's a good thing. Yeah. You see, as if it's a good thing. Especially when it comes to these new movements that are popping up. You have people praising the younger, younger generations. It doesn't matter if they may be stronger in this area over here, if but if they lack in righteousness, if they don't know about the works of Yahuwah, <clears throat> if they don't know about the power of Yah, forget about these movements yeah. that they are spearheading. Yeah. You see, that's why it's very important that we love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, because our people are so engrafted in what's happening in the world to where they have lost sight of Yahuwah. They've lost sight of him, and so he's completely out of the equation so when their little things um, go nowhere yeah they have these movements and nothing comes up <clears throat> they're sitting back saying what happened mm-hmm. we did this we did that we got boots on the ground we out here in these streets yeah I hear a lot of people praising about being in these streets well what are you doing yeah what are you doing who are you appealing to who are you talking to you saying no justice no peace I still haven't seen that no peace happen yet. Yeah. <laughs> you know? All you're doing is just chanting no justice, no peace. Mm-hmm. I see these movements where people tearing up stuff in your own neighborhoods. Yeah. What are you accomplishing? Mm-hmm. Ain't nobody listening still. 
You see? Now, I know some of you will disagree and say, well, it's because of this, that, and the other. Mm -hmm. We wasn't doing this, that, and the other then. But, but guess what? Guess what hasn't changed? Guess what hasn't changed? Mm -hmm. The oppression. Wow. The persecution. Still ain't changed. It still hasn't changed. Still the but same. But I thought that was the goal. Yep. I thought the goal was to end the oppression and mm -hmm. the persecution. But that hasn't changed because we yeah. just don't get it. Yeah. This younger generation, the generations after, they just don't get it. They think they can march their way yeah. to victory, <clears throat> chant their way to victory, and completely X Yahuwah out. This generation needs to sit back and really look at themselves and say, man, you know, why don't I want what my father or grandfather had, especially if they had something that was valuable, mm -hmm. something that was worth it. I mean, there are children today whose parents got the Holy Spirit and the children um, act like they don't want it. Mm -hmm. There, I've seen that too many times. You know what I'm saying? You should want all of the good things that you see your parents have. You should want those things. You should want them too. But today's generation, they're too busy looking at the... Um, Looking at uh, 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 some type of rainbow over at the other end on some greener pastures on the other side of the road or something, mm -hmm. you know? And, Looking uh, at what's going on in Hollywood, yeah. what's going on in Atlanta. I want I want to move here. It's, it's not fun here. It's, yeah. uh, it's more fun over there. Or yeah. should I say more sin over there. Is that what you really mean? Yeah. Is that what you really mean? <laughs> you say it's more fun over there, but do you mean more sin over there? Yeah, I'm going to tell you something. This generation is a sinful generation. Mm -hmm. now, I'm going to show you something, right? Okay, I'm going to show you how they are. This next passage here, I'm going to give you a peek at something of this being said here real quickly before we read it. First of all, you got to understand, sometimes when we hear the word of how wicked Israel was back in the days, we like to make statements like this and say, man, had I been back then with Jeremiah, I never would have been that way. I never would have been coming mm. against the, the, the prophet like this. I never would have. I never would have said nothing against Moses, and I, I wouldn't have been that way. Mm, mm, mm. Mm. Read this next one. <laughs> okay, <laughs> this next one is Matthew chapter twenty-three, verses thirty through thirty-three. Listen, it reads as follows: "And say, if we had been in the days of our fathers." We would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore, ye be witnesses unto yourselves, and ye are the children of them which killed the prophets. You hear this? Fill ye up the measure of your fathers, ye serpents, ye generation of vipers. Mm -hmm. How can ye escape the damnation of Gehenon? Of hell. So, so he say, the nerve of you to think that you wouldn't have been mm -hmm. there. You wouldn't have uh, done these wicked things and you wouldn't have been partakers of the blood or the prophets. Are you kidding me? You are a partaker because you're the children of them. And yet just like them, you wicked vipers. Just like them. Wow. Mm -hmm. You know what he called them? Um, serpents and generation of vipers. You know why? The tongue. Mm -hmm. Because that's how they were coming to Jeremiah with their tongue. Mm -hmm. Right? That's how they always come at you with their tongue. Running like, the mouth running and their saying mouth. stuff. And saying stuff, right? The generation of vipers, yeah? Mm -hmm. Now, this last scripture here is the Ooh, last one. This oh is my Mark. Goodness. Yeah, what's up, man? The word of y'all is quick and yeah. powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. That's right. Mm -hmm. This is Mark chapter 8, and this is verse 38. Hallelujah. It reads as follows. It says, Whosoever, therefore, shall be ashamed of me, and of my words in this adulterous and sinful nation or generation of him also shall the son of Adam be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his father with the holy angels. Now notice he called them what? Adulterous and sinful generation. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to tell you something. Adultery about sums it up. This is a generation of adulterous people. And you know it, don't you? Mm -hmm. I know you see it. I know you've seen it. You see it in the way people dress. You see it in the way they act and things they do. Every person, you, my son talk all, talks all the time about uh, working on the job and how the guy is always on the job is because they know he's he um, is uh, a virgin pretty much. And they know he's waiting to get married mm -hmm. before he does this, right? But these guys are always talking about sex. Man, you need to go head on. Man, this is, this is an adulterous and they, and they try to generation. make him seem like yeah. he's an oddity because he doesn't agree with what they're saying. And he chews them up. You know, he, he 
When he get done with me. <laughs> he says, if you want to be out here getting STDs, that's how he tell him that that's, that's on you. He said, you can only get them STDs. But mind that's your on business you. and let me mind mine. Exactly. Mine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it's an adulterous gener generation. Now, you know what's amazing here, right? If y'all was to do a tally, right, of all of those that claim to follow him and say, okay, how many of you have committed the act of adultery? Man. Man, it would probably be just like it was in the days of Moses when he says it fell in one day. Huh? It fell in one day. Thousands of people fell to adultery, to fornication in one day. So, what do that tell you then? We are... A genera this generation that you see today is an adulterous uh, and sinful generation. They are the descendants of this gen these other generations. And But you know what, though? I pray to Yah that we as a people get our eyes on because if we don't, you're going to see more and more stuff happening because Yah ain't playing. He had already said, okay, since you don't want since you, I'm going to remind you this, since you don't want to tell it to your to your young ones, Huh? Mm -hmm. And you don't want your young ones to tell it to their young ones when they have them. Then, okay, tell them this then. Mm -hmm. I'm going to send you something after you and your family and your life that's going to take you down such a road because you don't want to speak the truth. I'm going to take you through something. And you can run and tell that. Run and tell that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, family, we love you. And I, yes, we love you all. And family. I just pray that this message will. Well, those of you that were a part of this um, wicked generation will save yourself like like Peter says. Save yourself from this untoward from this gen generation. Save yourself from it. Mm -hmm. Don't go down the same road as this generation is going down, right? Don't go down the same road, okay? Save yourself from them. Don't be a generation of vipers, right? Mm -hmm. Don't be a, a perverse, a part of this perverse generation, okay? Be set apart. Be righteous. Be okay. repentant. Be repentant. That's Be right. Be on one accord with the Ruach. That's and right. And not with the things of this world. That's right. The scripture tells us that we have to separate ourselves from this world. That's okay? right. Love not the world, neither the things that are in That's the world. Right. For he that loveth the world, the love of the, the Father, Father is, is not, not in, him. in him. If you love the world yeah. so much, you won't be able to repent because the eye candy that they offer yes. is going to pull you in. And it's so a lot. It's a lot of eye candy. That eye candy is so bad. You you get on the internet. It's everywhere. It's just mm -hmm. stuff everywhere. You know, and so you. That's why you need a break from that stuff sometimes. Cause it's always in front of your face. You know, mm -hmm. but those that are spiritual have have grown um, spiritually strong against the stuff that they see with their eyes. So they, mm -hmm. they that stuff don't affect them. But those of you that it affects. You don't need to be. You don't need to be on the internet then if it affects you. Meditate on Yah's word. Yes, exactly. To fortify your mind, exactly, so that you are not falling victim to all of the stuff that's coming. It's gonna keep that's on right. coming because you know, notice the scripture says that in the last days it's gonna be just like it was in the days of days Noah. Of Noah. People are gonna be eating, drinking, and being merry. That's right. In other words. They're going to forget about what the scripture says that's going to happen in the end. And they're going to be focused on all the fun and the folly. Yes. And then like a snare, mm, mm, mm. it's going to come up on the whole earth. Wow. Anyway, we love you all, family. Yes, we thank we you do. all for joining us on the Shabbat. Yes. We pray that you all have a wonderful day. Enjoy your day. Get some rest. Mm -hmm. Get in the word. Shabbat shalom, Shabbat family. Shabbat shalom, family.